What's going on, guys? Rudalinol here, bringing you some HTML. <laughs> this is the second part of uh, some footage that I recorded for you in the last code commentary that I was doing. I think just a few days ago. Was that maybe two or three days ago? I don't know. Like it's it's Wednesday. It's a weekday. Uh, I actually had school today, and I've got homework to do. So I just wanted to like pop this code commentary out of here before like I get started on actual academic stuff that I probably should be focusing on right now. But uh, so yeah, feel special, guys. <laughs> feel the love. Do you feel the love in the air tonight? Cause I am putting some love in the air tonight for you. I'm, like, blowing kisses and stuff. But, whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is HTML. Uh, this was me writing up a Null Shell article on um, some Python code that I had written that I had talked about in the code commentary previously. This is just uh, looping through um, uh, HTML tables in Python. This is actually... Uh, the code that I had written for, uh, that I written in school, that I had done a code commentary over the footage of, that I was, you know, you know, you, you probably understand what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's okay. I don't either half the time, so, like, no worries. But, yeah, um, <laughs> let's get down to business. Let's see what I, I actually wrote down what I was going to try and talk about this code commentary. So, what is on the agenda today? And it says, uh, X Drive stuff. Like, what, what does that mean? No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, in my school, you guys know I'm a high school student. I attend school. I'm learning, doing all that good stuff. Bettering my fu my future. Bettering my future. I almost said that. Holy crap. <laughs> But, yeah, the way that my school works is that they have a network, and for every student, they allocate, like, a terabyte of, uh, of disk space. And this is accessible by the network, so every time you log in, you get part, you get moved, you, you, uh, you, you run the net use command, it started as a batch group when you first log in, and it connects to a network share, uh, like, students, and then your personal identification number. And then that that's a, that's a share on the network that gives you a terabyte of space, and that's where you would use, like, your academic portfolio and everything. That is where you can save your uh, classwork, save some stuff that you did electronically, and you would save it all in what they called the X drive, since they would mount it to the, uh, to the X drive, quite obviously. But, uh, but yeah. And the thing is, uh, today I've been trying to move some of my files over onto the X drive, because what I, well, like, the last couple days of school, I actually forgot to bring my USB drive, and that's what had all my tools, all my utilities, my, like, my favorite text editors, my Unix programs, and the Sigwin, and, like, all the stuff that I really wanted to have with me, and I'd forgotten it, so I'm like, oh, man, this sucks, you know, and, uh, <laughs> so I realized it would be a lot more convenient if I actually saved some of that stuff on the X drive, and, y and would be able to use it, just in case, like, I forget my USB, and so I tried to copy some my stuff over there, but then all of a sudden, it gives me this message like, hey, access denied, you know, you can't do this, <laughs> it didn't actually say that, but it gave me the whole, like, big, uh, strong and bold, access denied, and, <laughs> access denied, uh, the disk is either full or right protected, and you do not have permission to be able to do this, I'm like, whoa, what is this, what is this, I have a whole terabyte of space here, I had only used up, like, 156 gigs, not even that, most of that is just network stuff, but, uh, I still had, like, I don't remember the exact number, but it was, like, 981 gigabytes free, so I'm like, dude, I have plenty of space, what are you talking about, so, uh, I got, I got really worried, I got really freaked out, and apparently this was happening to some other students, too, so, like, I copied, uh, I, I tried to compress, actually, I try to comp compress all my folders, all my files, I used, uh, uHark, which is probably one of the best, uh, archivers ever, like, the, the compression rate is so much better and all that, but, yeah, like, I, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying here, but yeah, I compressed all my files, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to jump back onto what I was thinking, and, I pressed all my files, and I tried to move things over there again, and, like, it still told me, no, you can't do this, man, too bad. <laughs> so, uh, that, that got me really irritated, so I'm like, okay, fine, I'll try a different alternative. I will, uh, I'll just delete everything from my X drive. Obviously, I backed it up, I saved it all on my USB drive, but even then, it still won't let me do anything. So, I talked to the administration guys, and apparently, they are... The, t the, like, the IT guys, information technology, the people that try and, like, manage the system and everything, and, uh, I guess that what they do is they don't allow executable files on your X drive, so students aren't, like, playing games in the middle of class, and that makes sense, I mean, I can see what they're doing that, but at the same time, I don't, I don't, I have no reason to be playing games, I just want to have access to my tools, <laughs> like, just in case I forget my USB drive, I still want to be able to do what I need to do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Obviously, I didn't say that to the tech guy because, like, <laughs> uh, he do he doesn't want he doesn't know what I do. But the thing is, like, yeah, I I, I do want to be able to use my things. So I feel like 
what if I just, uh, what if I hide them inside an archive? I don't know about zip folders, they might look through that, I don't know about RAR files, but UHARC, the, uh, .uha, .uha, <laughs> those kind of files, they can't really look through, so I could just, I could just hide what I need in there. But that's a little counterintuitive, though, because I am gonna need to store the, uh, the program that will, uh, that will extract the files. So, what do I do about that? <laughs> Um, I might actually just use that on Google Docs, which is another thing that my school, get, my school gets into. So that way I'll have access to it, and I can use it however I need to. But the thing is, like, what if they let me... I was, I was questioning it, like, how far could I go with this? What if I used, uh... What if I used, like, Perl scripts? What if I used Python script? What if I use things that don't end in a .exe extension? Because, I mean, that's probably all that it looks for. Is this, is this like, judgment whether you can write on this directory or not? Is that based on the file extension? Or do they actually check the permissions of it and see where, like, whether it's read or read, write, execute, and stuff like that? But it, that wouldn't make any sense, because if it were permissions, it wouldn't allow you to transverse through folders. Because to be able to go through a different folder, it has to be executable. Or at least that's how it is on Unix systems. I don't know about Windows. But, yeah, that was interesting. Like, that was still something that I was trying to think of. So, I'm trying to do a little bit of a workaround to be able to run my things at school, because I need those. I want those. <laughs> so, I'm sure you guys know what I'm, how I feel. And, I mean, like, it's not fair. No, I... I it's a hard thing to say because it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to call because there are students, there are people who are just going to goof off and not do what they need to be doing, and they are just going to play games. So it, it makes perfect sense to block executable files. And in all honesty, the the people who are smarter than that will probably try to hide it like I did, like I'm going to. And yeah, <laughs> but wow, that actually took up a lot more dialogue than I actually thought it would. <laughs> but Okay, okay, I guess I can move on to the next topic. I actually only wrote down, like, three, but I figured the X-Drive stuff would be the, uh, the most important thing that I'd be talking about. Like, it's not fair. No, it is fair. It's, but at the same time, you know, it, it's a debate. I'm sorry. <laughs> it really is something that I, I can't decide on, but I still want to be able to use my things. <laughs> All right, all right, next topic. Uh, GML, Game Maker, Game Maker Language, what I have been doing in that wonderful world of Windows, JK, OMG, WTF, Barbecue. Okay, I, f I should have said BBQ there, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you guys know that I've been trying to, I've, at least I've been thinking about this idea for the Game Maker Interactive Shell, where you write GML, or the Game Maker Language, line by line, and it executes after each line. Um, the way I've been doing that is that right at the beginning of the program, when it starts up, it gives a little disclaimer, it says, like, this program was written by John Hammond or whatever, it says it's a Game Maker Interactive Shell, you know, it gives the date and everything, and there you go. But, I save those as variables, and there, there are still things that you need to output, so that's added to an array for the output array. But since everything sh in the output array should obviously be outputted, that also means the prompt, the prompt for writing your text. So... In the prompt, you have, um, well, no, in the array, sorry, you have, like, uh, index 0 is the caption, is the, yeah, the caption, index 1 is the prompt, index 2 is the keyboard string, the, what you're actually inputting, and then, because it's going to have to display that as well, and then it'll continue with prompt, keyboard, prompt, keyboard, prompt, keyboard, on and on. But the thing is, because we have that first, that initial caption that displays, it's only using like an even or an odd number to be able to determine whether we want to output the prompt at this position or the, the keyboard string at this position, so it had to use a little bit of an, not so much an algorithm, but at least a little bit of logic to be able to determine, okay, is this the first thing that we're outputting? Is this the, is this the caption, or is it not? Is it the keyboard? Is it the output? Put. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm not describing that or explaining it the way that I should be, but in all honesty, if I do keep working on this project with the Game Maker language and the interactive shell and stuff like that, you are going to see it. In fact, I probably will record some work that I will be doing on it, except this uh, this little logic that, I that I'm talking about now, I didn't actually record. But you'll see it in the code, obviously, and I'll, and I'll probably comment through it and all that. But yeah. <laughs> Alright, I am running out of time. Uh, sort of. <laughs> like, I, I only have 20 seconds, and I'll, I'm obviously not going to start the new topic. That, that is including the Nokia N900, so we can save that for the next video. I might do that tomorrow, 
But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll actually probably record it now and then upload it tomorrow, because, you know, efficiency! Woo! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, thank you guys so much, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Whoa, I almost screwed up on my outro there. That would have been bad. Okay, okay, I'm running out of time. I am out of time! You're looking at a black screen! What am I doing? Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, favorite, do what you do, people. Thank you so much. Have a great day.